next speaker is uh, Larry Peros, uh, Dr. Larry Peros, and uh, he's going to be speaking about cranial electrostimulation and in some, a little bit about the politics of neurotechnology. Uh, prior to founding CES Labs, of which he is a chief executive officer, Dr. Peros has held a number of distinguished and varied positions. These include a five-year stint as VP of an electronics corporation and five years as CEO of the Providence of Rhode Island Corporation, a nonprofit community-based social service agency overseeing the development of a number of major anti-poverty programs, uh, including the Center for Appropriate Technology. He then founded the Alternate Learning Project, cited by the U.S. Office of Education as an exemplary project, and awarded a major grant. He was late, uh, this project was later replicated at more than 125 sites nationwide. He is the author of two books and several articles, and is a former columnist for the Seattle Post Intelligencer and a commentator for KUOW Radio. He is a graduate of the University of Massachusetts and received his doctorate from Yale. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Larry Paris. mentioned that I had a rather unsettling night last night and didn't get much sleep and have much dreams to work with. And basically tried to sort out uh, what, how to make a statement about what was really important and interesting in the kind of work that I'm doing. I was trying to think about the various images that flashed across my mind last night, uh, the dream or non-dreams that occurred. Uh, fish. Rock stars, statistics, little black boxes. And woke up this morning, immediately ran to a bunch of three by five cards and start throwing all kinds of information on those cards in the hopes they would come together in some kind of coherent fashion when I appeared here today. We'll see. The fish clearly was a torpedo fish, clearly. Ancient times used for purpose of electro medication, written about by such luminaries as Plato and Aristotle. Juvenile, Pliny, utilized for purposes such as gout, epilepsy, headache. The rock star, well, Keith Richards, a copy of High Times in here somewhere. Ah, yes. His ugly countenance on the cover of this wonderful little magazine. Along with Peter Townsend of The Who and Eric Clapton, all had recovered from severe heroin addiction by utilization of cranial electrotherapy stimulation. Couldn't imagine them with fishes, fish on their heads, so clearly something else had to be utilized. And we have this little black box. Somebody said to me, well, you look wired this morning. I am, literally, metaphorically. Little black box, probably the least sexy, the least dramatic, the least theatrical of all the neurotechnologies presently on the market. I began to think about how I could really talk about this today in a way that really would make sense. Uh, had a set of slides, and then finally I said, no, no, don't really want to get into slides. This is really Mr. Coffee of the neurotechnology field. Pretty austere, pretty basic, pretty simple. And let's try to keep the presentation as clear and concise, as simple as possible. Let's also try to take this little device and try to put it in some kind of social and political context. After all, I'm not really a technologist, I'm not really a scientist, I'm not really a medical person, a therapist. My background is in education, I really fancy myself to be a humanist of sorts, a writer, and an educator, and very much concerned about human growth, personal potential, and about personal autonomy. Let's start with a little bit on cranial electrotherapy stimulation itself. The concept was really developed back in the Soviet Union, back in the 1940s. It was called electrosleep at that time because its primary, desig primary designation was for purpose of treatment of sleep disorders. It involved sending small amounts of electric current directly to the brain, particular configurations of it, in such a way as to alter various neurotransmitter activity. It was found that sleep disorders responded really quite positively to this electrical stimulation. People were sleeping longer, fewer interruptions during the course of the night. And they also found out that this impacted positively in regards to other respects that they had not imagined, primarily anxiety, depression as well. 
And they begin to experiment in terms of treatment of alcoholism utilizing cranial electrotherapy stimulation. Eventually, some of this material information made its way across the Atlantic to our country. A series of animal studies conducted at the University of Wisconsin Medical School, and then a number of clinical studies involving human subjects. We had real problems with this initially here in this country. We were in the midst of something called the Cold War, uh, which seems to have faded almost miraculously from our consciousness. We had a problem of translation of a lot of those materials. And we also had a Pavlovian mindset that we had to somehow transcend in terms of dealing appropriately with this particularly weird technology, electromedicine, especially given our pharmaceutical bias here in this country, the notion of utilizing electric current for purposes of healing did not seem to feel quite right. Lots of studies conducted during the 60s and 70s and 80s, and somehow now it seems about the right time for CES to really make its way out of the closet. What is this little box? Well, pretty simple little unit, essentially. All it is, lead wire, jack, the box itself, little 9-volt battery, the rear of the item itself, a simple amplitude knob, green light goes on, starts the current flowing. Electrodes generally are placed in the area below the mastoid process in the soft area between the jaw and the ears. We're talking about a frequency of about 100 hertz, 100 pulses per second, 20% duty cycle, 1.5 milliamps at max, sinusoidal waveform. That's the configuration that exists in this particular unit. There are other configurations for CES on the market. There are lots of other people producing and manufacturing CES now for the first time. And it's out there. I like it. I, in fact, I am passionate about CES because I really believe this is an extremely important tool in terms of our mental health and our emotional well-being. I think it's a very different order of things than, say, a lot of the neurotechnology that exists out there. It's peculiar in lots of ways, not the least of which is the fact that I, it is not sexy, it is not dramatic, and not theatrical, as I indicated earlier. Um, at the most, one feels a slight stimulation, just a little tingling sensation. In fact, you can operate below the sensate threshold and it'll be equally as effective. And this has been demonstrated by a series of double-blind studies. So, no flashing lights, no color, no beautiful things happening, just very quiet, very calm. And that is indeed the purpose of the unit itself to help bring about a state of relaxed awareness, to help bring you to a point of centeredness, of quiet, of calm, to help quiet down the grand central station of the mind with trains shuttling back and forth with thoughts constantly harassing you, to shut down the chattering monkey for a brief while, to allow you to get in touch with that really knowing part of yourself. The unit works. And this is another thing that really sets it apart from a lot of the neurotechnology that exists out there. We now have a substantial body of research out for the first time on the unit. We have about 1,000 articles that appeared at one time or another that are in the Foreign Service Bulletin, the United States Library of Congress. We have over 40, let's see, between 40 and 50 clinical studies, a fair number of which are double blind at this point, available to us, that demonstrate that CES indeed does work. We have a major meta-analysis being conducted now by Harvard School of Public Health in conjunction with the Salk Institute with a grant from the Fetzer Foundation. That, and a meta-analysis, of course, being sort of a mother of all studies, a computerized study of all studies, that will demonstrate once and for all that CES indeed is efficacious in the treatment of anxiety specifically. The results have not yet been put out by Harvard. They've been sort of carrying them very close to the vest at this point, simply because they don't want to release them till such point as, as the publication of the, of the paper is assured. We find ourselves in a very interesting position as manufacturers and distributors of CES units and, and uh, impassioned advocates of it to try to get this out to the medical and therapeutic community. And this is, again, what sets us apart in some ways from a lot of the other neurotechnology out there. You won't find CES units in Hamacher Schlemmer. You won't find them in Sharper Image because they are prescription medical devices by law. This is a, at once both good news and bad news. It's good news in the sense that it, it elevates the legitimacy of this particular modality by treatment of it as a prescription medical device. 
The bad news is that it makes it incredibly difficult to get hold of a unit many times, and it's, and it's not as easy to, uh, to negotiate out there commercially as, say, some of the other technologies that are available. The bad news is also that we have to deal with federal regulatory agencies, such as the Food and Drug Administration. And I'm sure enough of you here are familiar with that particular agency and the kinds of games that it tends to play. It occupies a very special status under the Food and Drug Administration right now. And its special status derives from the fact that it is a grandfathered device, meaning that it existed prior to the Medical Device Amendments Act of 1976, under which the FDA gained jurisdiction over medical devices. As a grandfathered device, they have no real jurisdiction over it. They can try to deal with it as misbranded or adulterated or claim there's insufficient evidence available in terms of treatment for safety, and, uh, in terms of treatment for depression, anxiety, or insomnia. But they really have no jurisdiction in this matter. They have but one recourse, which is to issue what is called a pre-market approval call-up, namely to call it up and have it evaluated formally by a panel of authorities and experts in regards to both safety and efficacy. In fact, they're obligated by law to do so. But they are reluctant to do so because they have to go to Congress for the monies to appropriate for such a call-up to occur. They are also under enormous pressure from the pharmaceutical industry to quash CES because CES represents the single greatest threat to the pharmaceutical interest in the United States of America. We're talking about a $63 billion industry annually, an industry also that spends over $5 billion a year in terms of promotion of drugs. We know that CES works. We know that it works wherever stress and stress-related disorders are indicated. We have utilized it not only in terms of anxiety, depression, insomnia directly, but wherever stress is indicated. We've seen it work, for example, in areas such as premenstrual syndrome. We've seen it work in terms of chronic fatigue syndrome. We do not tout this as something as a cure for those areas, but it is capable of dealing with the symptomologies of anxiety, depression, insomnia, of stress, and thus impacting directly on, on the illness itself. It has real implications in the war on drugs. The unit itself is utilized not only in, in terms of helping people get off heroin and cocaine, but also shown itself to be efficacious in terms of getting people off of methadone, which is incredibly difficult to get off of. It has shown significant results in terms of AMA, that's absent without medical authority uh, rates, in terms of people in drug and treatment facilities. It has shown itself to be incredibly efficacious in terms of recidivism rates as well. I brought along with me a whole ton of research studies. I didn't really want to bore you by going through all of them. They're available. For those of you who are interested, I'd be glad to talk with you about them later. I'd like to also indicate that I will make them available to any of you as well. I really believe that electromedicine really represents the wave of the future in many respects, no pun intended. I think that it is something wh whose day has really come. I'm going to keep this presentation, the formal presentation, relatively short because what I'd like to do is to really open this up for questions directly from you at this point. And I just really just, you know, basically just sort of threw some ideas down on, on these three by five cards and rather than try to lecture away on CES, I'd rather just get into the various aspects of it, including the social and political dimensions of it. So let me just open it up at this point on CES. Yes. I'm not quite sure how I can distill your question. Uh, okay. Uh, what, I, what I've thought about is that here is a unit that we know brings about some extremely positive change in people. With, with virtually no negative side effects. We feel very confident about the body of research that we have presently available to us. It's essentially been kept in the closet for a long period of time. It's now ready to emerge from that closet. We, we would like to make it available to as many people as possible. We think it represents a very real threat to vested economic interests in this country, primarily those of pharmaceutical companies. And just as the pharmaceutical companies worked very strenuously to keep tens off the market initially, uh, they have made considerable efforts along the same lines in regards to CES.